Good, good morning, everybody. Welcome this morning to our service. Uh, today is the last day of the liturgical years, the Feast of Christ the King. So our reading this, readings this morning will reflect that. So let's begin on page 119 of our prayer books. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God to, to whom, whom all hearts are, are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So if we would just all mute ourselves, that would be really good too, please. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. And top of page 121, let's say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Stir up, we pray you, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now we have our readings. Kay. Kay, are you doing the readings? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's just a bit of time delay. Yeah, no worries. Okay, our first reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 to 16, and then 20 to 24. Well, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nation and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pass to them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep, and have them lie down the place of the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, but you will be horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. The Lord will be their God. 
and to my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 100, and it's found on page 326. And Mel, could you just move to slide, please? Just say it alternate verses, there's only a few. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know, know that, that the Lord, Lord he is God. God. It, it is, is he who has made us, and we are his. We are, we are his, his people, and, and the sheep of his pasture. pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks for him and bless his holy name. For the, for the Lord, Lord is good. His, his loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. A second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. For this reason... Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, uh, chapter 5, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory, glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left, You are the, that are accursed, depart from me into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it? that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you. 
Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Lord, uh, as we acknowledge you as King today, our King and Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would be with us, uh, that we would, uh, that you would be close to us, Lord, as King and as friend, that we would know you as King and as friend, and that we would watch out for you in this world. Help us, Lord, to hear your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Um, I'm going to look at the Ephesians passage uh, in line with the last couple of weeks. Um, and I, I think it's uh, a, a very, very helpful and encouraging passage. I've woken up a couple of times in the middle of the night lately and I've been worried about the world. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's pretty hard, though, to solve the world's problems at 3.30 in the morning. However, uh, we get concerned about the world. Uh, the power plays and all that's going on. And, and I've wondered as I've lain there, not being able to get back to sleep, whether sometimes we may have lost a sense of the holiness of God. That begins with me, and that's, that's the thing that perhaps worried me the most. And if and when we take that issue seriously, we face an important question, we, and I think we have to be able to answer this question. How can this holy God, the one true holy God, reach out to a world that is so riddled with evil? Uh, as one author asked, how does God dare to, have, to, re to reach out to such a world, to a world, how does he bring this world into his orbit? So seriously did Israel take this question that they were so afraid that they uh, of this holy God that they told Moses to make sure he and not God spoke with them, otherwise they would die if he spoke to them. One of, that's one of the things that is established in the Old Testament that there is this awful chasm created between God, who is holy, and humanity, who is not. And at times they really felt that. Today, thankfully, we are not afraid to speak with God, to come into his presence. And that is a good thing. But we don't want to lose or compromise our understanding of God as holy. Because when we do, we dis distort who God is. We need to hold together God as intimate father, intimate friend with God as holy. When I reflect on, on that, uh, different times. I'm reminded of that scene in the king's speech. You may remember it. When the king takes and shakes the hand of his speech therapist, Lionel Logie, who helped him manage his stutter all the way to giving his first speech, uh, first wartime speech. That's at the end of the movie. George VI is able to make this wonderful first wartime speech. And as he was shaking Logie's hand, the king's words to Logie were, thank you, my friend. The reply from Logie was, thank you, your majesty. The two had become close friends, and yet George VI was still Logie's monarch. In relationship, they were both friends and king and subject. So our relationship with God is as friend as an, and as father, but it is also the holy God and his people whom he's created. Our passage today in, in uh, Ephesians helps us to understand how this holy God is able to reach out to this broken world in which there is so much evil. In one sense, we, we, we as people... As God's, we as people have no, have no place in the presence of God because we, we do sin. And yet he has dared to reach out to us. He has dared to involve himself in the world where there is this evil. And he is committed 
to making us heirs of his kingdom. How is this? The answer, of course, lies with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we see that in our passage today. But there's a story behind this passage that we just have to know if we're going to know and embrace who God is. And when we know this story, that relationship with God comes alive and powerful in our lives. Just before our passage today, Paul has given an extensive introduction, as Paul often does, uh, a, a, an extensive eulogy that celebrates God's blessings for those who are in Christ. I think Paul really did face that question. How can God reach out to us? How could God reach out to me? He persecuted the church after all. So he celebrates in this extensive eulogy God's blessing for those who are in Christ. And now in our passage today, he gives thanks. And everything he says in this passage flows out of this expression of thanks. Paul's thanks sparks his imagination about uh, what God is doing in the world <clears throat> and, and, uh, and how we can trust his son. Paul was one who could never give enough thanks to God for the outpouring of his grace and, and his blessings on his people. Paul's thanks begins by identifying the Ephesian faith in the Lord, he says, and their love towards all the saints. This is foundational to what follows. This thanksgiving becomes a bridge uh, to Paul praying then for the Ephesians. Paul's prayer is significant for three reasons. Firstly, Paul prays to the God to the God as the God to God, as the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he acknowledges that Christ is the bridge between us and the Holy God. Paul draws attention to Christ, who gave glory to his Father through his obedience in going to the cross. What is the glory of God? Biblical understanding? Usually the glory of God is the reflection of the essence of his being. God's being, the sum of all of his attributes, which was all revealed in Christ. And from this glory flows God's reputation. It emerges from here, revealing himself in Christ. God's reputation displays splendour, grace and power. In the immediate context, God has revealed himself, Paul notes, in his predestining his people in redemption of his people and in the sealing of that redemption with the Holy Spirit. The second uh, reason Paul's prayer is significant is that Paul asks God to give the Ephesians a spirit of wisdom and revelation. The NRSV says a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Uh, that really can't be right. It really ought to read that the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We can only get God's wisdom and revelation from the spirit. We can't do that in and of ourselves. It's not like we have a human spirit that can go and get God's wisdom and revelation. The human spirit is incapable of, uh, in and of itself, to gain God, the wisdom of God, let alone grasp his revelation. We know from 1 Corinthians, for example, that human wisdom misses the mark and the chasm between the God who is and our knowing him can only be bridged and activated by God himself and that happens in his spirit today. Why is that significant? Why, what, have the, incidentally, the NIV does identify spirit there as the Holy Spirit. Why is this important? That, the third reason this prayer is important. Paul and understands and presses this point that the life of the church in Ephesus and around the world is lived within the life of the Trinity. So if you look at this passage, Father, Son and Holy Spirit are all mentioned. This is a Trinitarian prayer of thanks. 
our life, your life and my life today, tomorrow, tonight when we're asleep, when we wake up at 3.30 in the morning worrying about the world, lies within the life of the, of the Trinity. That's where it belongs, our life. <clears throat> so we have these three significant things about the prayer of Paul. That Christ is the bridge to the holy God and gives him glory. Secondly, that Paul asked God to give his people a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And thirdly, that that prayer identifies that our life is, is lived within the Trinity. And we see that in 2 Peter, where, um, where Peter says that we share in the nature of God. Just want to say a couple of more things about wisdom and revelation. To know God in the sense meant in the context here is to know him experientially and intimately, to know him in himself. Secondly, God's wisdom and his self-revelation empower us to live as we ought in this world in a way that makes the world a better world, a more just world. So in a world now that is so affected by evil, it is your task and my task to, uh, by living with God's wisdom in our lives and in his revelation and life in the Trinity uh, and with his wisdom, which is a practical wisdom, is to, make, is to work towards making this world a better world. God's wisdom has this practical side to it that makes sense, helps us make sense of this broken world and to live in it in a way that we give glory to God and his kingdom. <clears throat> what else happens when we have the wisdom and re revelation of God? Paul says the eyes of our hearts, our deepest inner selves, that's where the heart is, it's the deepest inner self, it's not the thing that goes on here, that the eyes of our hearts, our deepest inner selves, our eyes, our spiritual eyes will be opened and we will be able to see forward into the days to come, to understand those days more. To, we will see God at work in the world, rep, um, healing this world. And we will live with the hope that a better day is coming. With wisdom and in knowing God, we are aware of the brokenness of the world. I think our faith, the Christian faith, in, acknowledges and embraces the realities of this world the evil of this world, but knows, but our faith knows that a new day is coming. Paul reinforces this by reminding us that we are called, that we have been elected by God, predestined to see what God's plan is for the cosmos. Because by living in the life of the Trinity, we are seeing outwards as God does into this world. We see now the riches of the inheritance among the saints, eternal life with God in the freedom and the peace and the shalom of the new heavens and the new earth. We understand that this is happening and to some extent we can experience that now. All this becomes possible because of the immeasurable, the immeasurable greatness of the power of God in our lives that we have. As people of God, we have our place already in eternal life. But how do we know that power is real? Paul knows that. Well, how do we know that? How do we know that's real when I wake up in the morning and I haven't had a good sleep? We know it. It's real because God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavens. By definition... We who are in Christ, who is human and divine, live already in the life of the Trinity. One of the members of the Trinity is a human being. And we live in that person. We're just waiting now actively for the fullness of what it means to live in eternal life. There's one more thing to say about Christ the bridge here. He's the bridge, he's the king. He is the Lord over all. 
who is far above all rule and authority. And, and we need to hear that before we, I think, before we hear what else is going on in Ephesians. There are what one earth author calls some mysterious actors on the stage. Satan and the forces of evil, powers and authorities. On a number of occasions, the, the author of Ephesians, Paul, refers to these, uh, these beings, powers and authorities. God created some, natural, uh, some supernatural beings to rule the cosmos, but many rebelled against God and they became involved in the crucifixion of Christ. Ephesians regularly, as I say, refers to these powers. And that's why Paul's reference to Christ having dominion over all things is vital because then these principalities and powers are come under Christ's rule. Christ defeated them when they thought he had destroyed him, they had destroyed him on the cross. The church, being in Christ, shares in this victory, even, even if we don't feel like it sometimes. The power for us is superior in every way to the powers of evil that oppose us. That would have been especially encouraging to the Ephesians living in a very pagan culture, sometimes feeling quite small and insignificant early days in the church. And it is especially encouraging for us living in the world today, which so often seems to have abandoned God. We feel sometimes that these powers might be dragging us down, might be pulling us away from God. But we feel confident and hopeful that no matter how challenging things can be, that the victory is ours because we live in Christ now. I remember our Archbishop saying one time, last year I think it was, that the Anglican Church in Melbourne, we can feel quite insignificant today, in the world today. But we are not, as people of God. We have been empowered to reflect God's glory and his kingdom in this world. We are simply... A, um, um, we, 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 we simply, at times, we, are, we, need to, we always need to carry our cross uh, as we head to, along that path towards the fullness of this victory. Christ is the head, the church is the body, Paul says. The church is the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. That is a powerful truth that we never want to forget. Now, I know, for, uh, and I don't know what it's like for you, but I know for Cheryl and myself... We need to visit this truth every day in our lives. You know, we have a you know we have a son who's disabled, and life can be tough. But we have this truth that we live in Christ, and a better day is coming, and we can taste of that day today. So, two things: let's be encouraged always. Whatever is happening in our lives we can go to this kind of passage and be encouraged and remember what God has done in and through Christ, Christ our King, Christ our Lord, and that your life with God, my, our life with God, we, can, we are in Christ, we are waiting actively for that last day, which is also a new beginning. And let's with Paul give thanks always. And when we give thanks every day, when we live our day giving thanks, we are naturally drawn to God and away from those things that would pull us away from him. And we find that in Romans. So let's always give thanks for what God has done for us. Let us pray. Father, we are just uh, grateful for this passage and for the truth of who you are in our lives, Lord, help us to know you both as Father, as friend, but also as Holy God, as our Lord. And that your Son is over all powers, 
on all authorities in this world. Help us to live in that story, in the truth of that story, and help us to reflect that story in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, let's turn to page 123 and affirm together the faith of the Church. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Jesus Christ, true ruler of the created world, we pray for the peoples of the world, for victims of war, brutality and oppression, for victims of unjust economic and political systems, for the hungry, the homeless and the refugee, and Lord, the, Lord those categories just cover so, so many people on this planet, a broken planet, struggling to live well. Lord, we particularly pray for those in the United States, Lord, who are divided by uh, doubt, some of them over an election that has been proved to have been um, thoroughly investigated and affirmed as being not corrupt, and yet some people think it's corrupt. And yet in other countries, Lord, there's corruption going on all the time. And there's never any period where things are not corrupt. The world just seems to be topsy-turvy, Lord, in that regard. Lord, we pray for all the power imbalances and the power struggles in our world today. Nations aligning with different nations. Friends becoming not so friendly. It can be disconcerting, Lord. And yet you are the Lord of it all. And you have your plan, and your plan cannot be frauded. And we give you thanks for the leaders who serve the common good, and for all who work for an increase of justice and peace. And we thank you, Lord, that the scripture says that you have the hearts and minds of kings in your hand. You are the king of kings, you are the king of all the rulers in the world. The scripture says that you called Nebuchadnezzar your servant. That can be chilling at times that you could use someone like Nebuchadnezzar to do your work and yet you did. So Lord, we place all these struggles on the world stage in your gracious and loving hands trusting you to work it all out for the good of humanity. Make us a people whose hearts are ruled by your mercy and compassion, 
and in your mercy hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Jesus Christ, true shepherd of all your sheep, we pray for your church. We pray for your church to have courage in places where there is persecution. And we pray also on the flip side of that for renewed zeal in places where the church is experiencing apathy. And in all places, Lord, for unity in places of discord and division. We give you thanks and pray for all who are shepherds to your people. Lord, especially for our Archbishop, for our bishops in the different areas, for our Archdeacon Helen, for our area dean, James, for all the priests and pastors and all who minister in your name in this local area, Lord, of each denomination, all working for the glory of your kingdom. Make us a people whose hearts are ruled by your forgiveness and grace, remembering that our lives are centred in you and in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Jesus Christ, true companion to all who seek you, we pray for those to whom our lives are bound, for our families, our friends and all whom we love. We pray for those that we are related to, Lord, that have not yet come to know you in an intimate way. We pray, Lord, that you bring them into your kingdom. We pray for this parish community of Frankston North and Carrum Downs, for those with whom we work and play. We pray, Lord, for a smooth opening up again of your church as the restrictions lift further. May we be able to celebrate your holy word and work together. We give you thanks for all those who, those whose love or care or daily work enriches our lives. I invite you to name in your hearts those people who affect your lives on a daily basis. We uphold to you, Lord, all our carers that look after our son, Luke. Make us a people whose hearts are ruled by your reconciliation and love. And in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. Jesus Christ, true comforter to all who suffer, we pray for all in special need. Those lost in grief or loneliness or hopelessness. Remembering at this time where we prepare to celebrate your birth, people really struggle. We pray for those who, for them, this is a reminder that they've lost a loved one or they're out of work and they're unable to afford the things that they usually have, maybe not able to go on a holiday, whatever it is, Lord, be with them in a special way. And we pray for those imprisoned by pain or guilt or despair, those sick in heart or mind or spirit. And we give you thanks for all who bring healing and hope to those in need. Lord, we pray for those in our number who we know are ill and needing surgery. We pray this week for Bev. She has to go back into hospital, Lord, and uh, she's never really found relief from her surgery that she had last time. Just trying to find my... And, um, Lord, we we pray for the Waite family as it's Peter's birthday today. No, next week is birthday. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We pray for the Waite family as they prepare for Peter's birthday next week and um, as they go towards a Christmas um, 
Lord, without him. Just heal their hearts, their grief and their pain, Lord, we pray. And we pray for healing prayers for, for Luke, for Abby, Anita, for Christine Jokic, who's um, had extra surgery and is now recovering from that, for Ali, for Vani wanting to come out to Australia, for Peaceful Minds, for Chris and Meredith in their struggle with their neighbour, for Heather as she recovers from a fall, we pray for a good outcome to the investigations into her pain. For Brian, that you give him strength each day and that he'll know when to rest and when to work. For Mel, Lord, struggling with um, all the pain that she's endured so many years, that there'll be a definitive answer to that problem, Lord, in her jaw. And we pray, Lord, that uh, if she needs to have surgery, that that will all go well and this will be resolved once and for all. We pray for those struggling with uh, hip problems and back problems and those of us who don't get much sleep. We give all these things into your hands, Lord. And we pray for those who still are separated by border closures from family as Christmas ticks away. Um, and we get closer to it, Lord. May, be, we, may we be reunited at this time. Make us a people whose hearts are ruled by your compassion and hope and in your mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus Christ, true ruler of earth and heaven, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful servants of every age. Help us follow in the footsteps of your saints that we, like them, may be gathered into your eternal presence a people after your own heart, the sheep of your own fold. Jesus Christ, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our, our sins, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him. And, and he in us. Amen. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, 
pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's Please greet, each greet other. one another. Peace, this one. peace with you. Peace. And carrot. Hello. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. Shalom, everybody. <laughs> oh, I'm caught up in you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi, Jeanette. <laughs> peace with you. Yeah, peace be with you. Yeah. Hadn't said hello to Jeanette yet. Peace be yeah. with you. <laughs> um, peace with you, Mel. Came in. Peace be with you. And Brian, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Mary. Peace be with you, Thomas. Yes. Jean and Cornelius. Jean and Cornelius. Hi, Cornelius. Cornelius. Mary. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Brian. Uh -huh. Thomas and Kate. Peace be with you, Lorraine and uh -huh. Ian. Just really Sylvia, peace be with you. And David Bell, peace be with you. Hey. Peace. Hi, Ty. Hi, humans. Hi. That's right. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Now we give thanks for the offerings. Okay, so might like to mute yourselves again now. We give thanks for the offering. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And we turn to Thanksgiving number five on page 139. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. Lord our God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. We thank you that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you and set us free to love and serve one another. Lord our God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. We thank you that on a cross, on the cross, Jesus took away our sin, all that keeps us from each other and from you. He frees us from hate and fear and from all that destroys love and trust. Lord our God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, share his body and his blood. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me of me. Christ has, has died. died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us. Fill us with your spirit that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to this world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord Blessing and honour and, and glory and power are yours forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, 
So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep me in eternal life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, keep me in eternal life. David, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Prayer A. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. And over the page... Father, we, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So just uh, a few notices. So, so next, next uh, Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, of course, the first Sunday of the new liturgical year, prayer B, uh, year B. Uh, so, and it's also our AGM, uh, which will be, so we'll have... The nine o'clock service on Zoom as normal, um, and uh, we'll we'll come on at ten thirty, I think. And but we'll have the AGM at, at 11, 11 30 next week. So, so we want as many people there as possible. We want to make sure that um, we get through. It, it, it'll be very quick. We've everyone's received their reports. Uh, I would think um, by now. Uh, any questions that people have, please, you can bring them up before that day. Also, Should if... they email their questions in? Yeah, or? just email. Yeah, I'll put it on. It's oh, on the yeah. pew sheet. Uh, any uh, doubts, same thing. Uh, put it in writing, send an email. If you want to know, if you want to check that you're on the parish roll, you can send an email or ring up and contact, uh, uh, contact us and we can tell you straight away whether you are. We don't want to send out, out to everybody the parish role. Uh, what else? Um, yes. There's no birthdays today, is there? Isn't there? No. Oh. No. I know it's Rosalind's birthday during the has been during the week. Whose birthday? Rosalind, who's come from Queensland. Yeah, Rosalind, I was been... thinking of her before when I was praying, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll sing happy birthday to Rosalind. She didn't well, have a birthday a couple of days ago. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, let's sing Happy Birthday to Rosalind. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rosalind. Happy birthday to you. Hooray. 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 <laughs> and and also, um, still I think we're still waiting on uh, nomination forms as well. So they really need to come in very quickly now for uh, the positions, you know, for the parish council and so on. So please do that. And the way that that can be done 
is to uh, fill out the form. The forms were sent out by email. If you haven't got one, I can resend the email. Can't and, hear you, David. Sorry? Can't, Can't hear you. Oh, okay, so we need we need nomination forms in for... Parish uh, the, Council. For Parish Council. So the way we can do it, so the forms were sent out by email. If you haven't got the form, let me know. I can resend it. But then uh, the people who are endorsing uh, the nomination, they can do that by email. So we don't have to send that one form around to everybody. It can be done by email because of the COVID situation. So the yeah, diocese... Problem. What's that? No problem. Yeah, okay. So there's all of that. Uh, so just... To... See you guys on morning tea. Okay, okay. See you, all right. Mel. All right, Mel. So all right. just to clarify... Bye. Just to clarify, right. just to clarify something. Right. So even if you've been on parish council last year, if you want to nominate, you still have to put in your form to nominate. Yes. Because there was someone who didn't know that. Yeah. Every everybody's. Can I get a piece be with you. Everybody. No, because we can't hear Every everybody's term, the uh, a term on parish council yeah, last the background. last one year. So every term. So every year. We need nomination forms to be filled out again for the following year, regardless of whether or not you are on parish council. For anyone's not sure, parish council, the term of parish council is one year. Is that, yeah, that all yeah. right? So, that's, so you need a new form every year if you want to nominate. Yeah, okay. So please do that, um, those people nominating. Otherwise... We Go are... in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. So, see you at morning tea, 10, uh, 10 30. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Pleasure. Bye.